back, everybody. You are tapped into nothing but the truth. I am your girl, Noni Juice, holding it down. And I got my boy, Ben, jamming with me. It's amazing. Now, hold on. Let me go grab. Oh, you going to grab it for him? All right, cool. So, we have another special guest in the building y'all okay and this is a legendary guest right here okay this ain't no average guest right here <laughs> we are talking about shake shake has come back he has come through y'all i've heard his voice before you know him out in the community doing great things always all the time and he is back with a very special treat for us yes. because he has his 414 day shoe line that is dropping only 414 shoes that is going to be dropped in honor of Milwaukee 414 Day. Yes, 100%. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so if you are not tapped in on 1017 The Truth on YouTube right now, you need to be tapped in because we are showing the shoes live on our stream. So make sure you guys do that. Ben, how are you feeling about the shoes so far? Okay, because I'm loving all the intricate details that have everything to do with Milwaukee. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I had to hit you with the tagline, but no, in all honesty, no. That that sneaker right there, uh, I love the detail that you do have to, on it. And in, in all honesty, I've never seen a sneaker that actually has the brick wall on the tongue of the shoe. Yeah, like, look, yeah. Look, that that kind of design there is crazy. Well, what inspired you guys to even put that there? Yeah, all of it actually. Um, yeah. You know, just because uh, the city kind of known for the cream city brick. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to kind of like make sure that the shoe had good representation, yeah. you know, for Milwaukee. And so, you know, um, you know, when Dame came to the Bucks <laughs> and then, you know, the Bucks started, you know, dealing with Adidas. And then when I told them, you know, the colors that I wanted to use, they was kind of nervous because they didn't want to, like, you know, upset the Bucks. Mm. So I had to contact Peter Fagan, get the Bucks to sign off, and, you know, shout out to the Bucks. I mean, he, the lawyer did it, you know, the Bucks lawyer did it probably in, you know, an hour. Just it like was done. that. Yeah, and it was done. They was like, yeah, and they was like, they they was like, it'd be good for the city. They said, we with it, you know, boom, it's done. Now, this is your second line that you are dropping. You started off with the day ones that yes. went crazy yes. online and yes. everywhere. I feel like you sold out so many times. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, many yes. times. No, I'm like, I'm serious. Every time I'm like, oh, it's another sellout, okay? Yes. And now you got these 414 Day shoes. Now, what inspired you to want to even create something in honor of Milwaukee? Cause I just feel like I said I feel like we just kind of like so overlooked and so underrated, you know what I'm saying? And so like I I saw like you know all these other cities, you know 404s and 303 313 and stuff like that, and I was like, why we yeah. don't never why we never had a 414 day shoe? And then you know Adidas was like, cause you never designed it. I said, well let's get it. Then. So you know so I was like, all right. So then I you know put it together. Um, we got a lot of other details, like we got like some stuff for the home bridge, the lighthouse all on the, you know, on the insole. You can't really see it, so it's okay. all in there. It come in a special box uh, with some special paper. It's not going to be in this box, but mm -hmm. it's going to come in a special box. Everybody going to get the same box. And, um, yeah, and so, you know, on this tongue, you got the Adidas shaped in um, cheese. And then on the oh, other, I ain't even peeped that. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. You oh. look your good eye. Wait till you, you wait till he tell you about the other uh, yeah. tongue. And so then the other tongue is like the Adidas dipped in beer. You know what I'm saying? Because that's just mm -hmm. another, you know, some other things beer that city. we kind of known for. So, yeah, man. So it's gonna be it's gonna be good. Oh, and then the last uh, the last hidden jewel is that they all numbered. So it's all numbered. I so love this that. is number. What is this? This number three ninety or four four. 414. And you are only dropping four hundred and fourteen pairs. Yep, and that's it. That's it. That's so if it. you do not go and get the shoe, <laughs> you just going to be out of luck. I don't know what to tell you, Benjamin. I, it's only 414 of these. Yes. So so with that being said, Shake, who got the 414 one? Is, is that specific I don't know. I, I didn't want to, like, so the, the way we did it, the way we did it, because, like, it's too much math for me, man. Uh -huh. I, I, I can't figure all that out. So I just said, well, just make sure 001. 414 is a 14 for me, mm. and the rest just let it be random and let somebody be like, Yo, I got, I got the 414. Exactly. Man, they should let get a special random. prize or something. Know, they right? got that's, that's the Willy Wonka effect, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. do you got the 414? No, I got the 369. Like, yeah, you know, exactly. that, that's crazy. Who, who even thought of that idea when it came down to you guys releasing the shoe? Was it just more so like, Hey, um, I'll let you explain. Nah, it's just it's just like I said, just like a casual conversation, you know, because I started seeing all these other cities 
you know what I'm saying? Like I said, man, we just so overrated and, you know what I'm saying? I mean, underrated, I should say, and overlooked. And so I was just like, why? I was like, man, 404. And I was like, okay, 313. Okay, I get it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but why we don't never have, why Milwaukee? You know, it's like, they was like, you never designed it. I'm like, all right, well, let's do it then. 414. And so we put it together, man. Yeah. Now, I want to know about the colors because I know you mentioned the green and you had to get the approval, but what made you want to do the red and then also like the, what do you call it, like a tan? The cream. Mm-hmm. The cream for the cream city. Mm-hmm. The cream was the cream city brick, and then uh, the green and the red was kind of like I like those old school vintage mm-hmm. um, Bucks colors. You know, like a lot of some people looking at it say, oh, man, I got some Gucci that'll go right with that. So Yeah, yeah. But it really Ooh. that, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's more so. And then I like, you know, like put the green stitching because the stitching um, was, what color was it? It was it was just it was just plain like uh, white you know, on the mm-hmm. sample, but I was like, nah, make it green. So, yeah, yeah everything came out perfect. It come with a, a green pair, of, uh, extra green pair of laces and an extra red pair. Okay, I love that too. And when it comes to just the shoe line and how you dropped it this time, was there anything that you learned from when you did your day one drop that you kind of switched up or kept? Yeah, the one thing that I learned is that, like, I'm – I got to say this, like a lot of people say this, but I'm really for us, right? Yeah. I really am, you know what I'm saying? And like when I did the day one, you know, we kind of had that special box. And then, you know what I'm saying? I was just like, man, I should have did that box for everybody. So mm-hmm. I that was a mistake on my part. So this time I want to make sure everybody get that same box. Be, like it's no, everybody, you know, your 130 is just as good as his 130. You know, that's going to be the price, 130. I was going to do 134, 14, but I was like, ah, I'm overdoing it <laughs> So, but I was just like, you know, like your 130 is just as good as his 130. So I want everybody to get the same thing because we all equal. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, Now, when and where can they get the shoes? The shoes officially drop uh, Saturday at Clicks, uh, 1916 East Capitol Drive at 11 o'clock. And we shutting it down at 414. So, oh, you know. man. So you, it's so limited. <laughs> now, how, okay, you got 414 pairs. But how did the sizing work for that? It's all random. I like I picked the size and like I picked the sizes as far as like so it's gonna be three and a half to fifteen, but the you know the computer just automatically picked the number. Picked how many times or yeah. how many uh, sizes would be out there or whatever. No 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 no. no. I, picked, okay. I picked the full size run, but they, oh, they the numbers the is, numbers is just, just random. Like, yeah, it's over. It's like it's okay. Like the, well, I need to make sure my size is definitely there when I go grab. What's the time frame again? Eleven to four fourteen on Saturday. Four thirteen. Oh my gosh, Benjamin, you gonna have to slide. We gotta slide. I mean, honestly, you know, as everybody in Milwaukee knows, this weekend is gonna be very hectic when it comes down to being in the, you know, in the music space, if you will. Mm-hmm. You know, we have four one four four one four day that's about to happen on this Sunday. A lot of people are kicking it four one three. You know, this Saturday. Uh, I wonder, are you doing any kind of like release with four one four MKE Mocha? No, I don't. I didn't even know anything about that. Um, oh, interesting. Only, okay. Yeah, I didn't know mm-hmm. about it. Only thing I'm kind of doing is um, I'm doing something with uh, Seaford Middle School. I think it's elementary school, but I'm doing something with them on the 11th where we're doing a sneaker fair. You know, so we got 120 kids, so they're gonna be designing kind of like what community I or love what Milwaukee. Yeah, bro, we got we got to man, we gotta we gotta show them man. They don't they don't know. You know, mm-hmm. they don't know that. You know, like when they land those clothes on the bed, you know, to go to school and look fresh, that's a stylist and people get paid for that. Yeah. You know, they don't know when they say, oh, I'm going to wear the green with the that and then no, put that hat on because then that, you, it, it'll play off that. That's a colorist and people get paid for that. You know, so they don't know. That's so I just colorist. want to. Yeah, mm. bro, the good colorist. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they don't know that people get paid for that. So I just want to expose them to those type of things. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, it's a hundred, was it, 120 kids, and I want them to kind of like design, kind of like the inspiration. What, what does community look like to them, and what do Milwaukee look like to them, and just tell that story through the sneaker. Interesting. Uh, I think that's very important because, I mean, through the kids, ultimately you get a, a fresh eye, right? You get a fresh eye. They mm-hmm. see the world vastly different from what we've seen it. Um, last time when you dropped your day ones, it was so, some. You get you did somewhat of the same event at uh it was of uh, the boys and girls Daniel club. Marnix. Yeah, you, Daniel Marnix. I'm certain that you found a few artists or uh, uh, creators from that. Is that correct? Man, you know the crazy thing is like I be moving around Home Depot wherever, and then the parents always come to me. When you doing that sneaker thing again? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, should I open up a sneaker? Like I'm yeah. just like, man, because like it just seemed like the interest was really there, and the kids was real creative too. 
It was real creative. I mean, how can they not, though, Shake? Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they have these iPads where they can draw whatever designs they want these days. I was just looking at uh, I was just looking at uh, the Adobe uh, Adobe Cloud. You can literally just drop a picture of whatever you like and then put it on there, and then it'll show you so many different options. So mm-hmm. for the fact that you know you, you have... I, I'd like to say some kind of foresight on actually, you know, uh, pioneering this this new creative way for for kids to be a part of. I commend you for that because they they need to open up their eyes to uh, be exposed to a lot more to what they can actually do. Yeah, yeah, their yeah. curiosity. Yeah, they gotta, letting the curiosity lead them. Right, they got to go down that rabbit hole. So thank you so much, Shake. Seriously, yeah. and see, people don't really know like the sneakers is a segue to so much. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, that's not the end. That's just to get them. You know, like that's just to, like get, get them, them in, in the, the door. door. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. Like, I'm doing something with another school. Um, I'm going to let the cat out the bag a little bit. But I'm doing something with another school. And what we're going to do with them is it's like 30, was it 36 kids in the class? And we're going to let them all design a shoe. Mm. And then we're going to figure out a way to pick the best one. And then I'm going to have Adidas make that shoe. Wow. Oh. I think that is so, like Ben is saying that is That's extremely powerful. powerful. Yeah. yeah, that is very powerful. Uh-huh. And it almost <laughs> And it almost comes down to... Maybe you do need to open up some type of school or something because when Seriously. you think about it, when it comes to Milwaukee, we are filled with talented, creative individuals. Yes, and man. a lot of our talent ends up leaving the city just because we don't have like a foundation of schools like that or classes like that and, and shops like that that can kind of help mold them into whatever it is that they want to do with their creativity. So that might be a good idea. Yeah. The only thing that you said I disagree with is Which leaving one? Milwaukee. Leaving Milwaukee? Yeah, because, like, that's why I kind of, like, you know, like, when I used to do things, I used to always kind of, like, be in the back. And that's why, mm-hmm. like, now I'm in the front on the radio, you know, doing right, things right. that I never usually do because I want the kids to know that they don't have to leave. Yeah, that's what I'm that saying. Kind of they they, you know, they end up leaving. It, they can do it, mm-hmm. that, but they don't have to. And they, they don't. Do it, they, can do it yep. right, they can do it right here, you know what I'm saying? Like, I walk the same block, same streets that they yeah. walk, you know what I'm saying? So they they don't have to leave. They can do it right here. But see, I I, I think that's the importance of you, though. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the importance of you because you went outside the boundaries, saw everything that's actually possible, and now here you are today bringing it all back. I mean, again, here's the second sneaker release, right? (laughs) Only only, only man from Milwaukee to actually have his own, own Adidas. You know, that's that's pretty crazy, Shake. That's pretty crazy. And a now, black man. Uh, a black man, right? <laughs> and then ultimately for you to be able to pass these ideas and concepts down to children who 10 years from now, 20 years from now, can be the next uh, uh, per, uh, creative on Adidas. You know, mm-hmm. uh, could be the next person uh, designing the next Adidas sneaker. There you go. You know, I yeah. think that's crazy. But, but I think ultimately, you know, that uh, I think that's what you really what you get out of it though. It's like you're giving back to the kids to help them see a better future for themselves. Yeah, because if they don't if they don't like they just don't they got to know that all of this stuff is possible. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And sometimes they don't believe that it's possible. Right. Sometimes you got to you know you got to show them. Yeah, right. they need that representation. Yes. That's what's so important because yes. then they're like, "Oh, if he can do it, I can do it." There Especially you if you show them how to necessarily there do it. There you go. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. Well, do you have any apparel also with this line? Because I know with the day ones, you drop the hoodies that you're wearing right now. Yes. So, do you have any shirts or hoodies uh, that we got a couple? We got a couple. So it's one. It's one. Um, was well, it's, it's one that's here. The other one is we hope we fingers crossed that it make it in time. So we'll see. Okay. But yeah, we got one for sure. One for sure. All right, you guys. Well, right now we are kicking it with Shake showing us his 414 day shoe. It is his second Adidas shoe that he has dropped, and it is specifically for everybody here in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. We are going to continue the conversation with Shake on the other side. So make sure you guys stay locked in and don't go nowhere. What did I say? Don't turn that down. Don't turn that down. You are listening to Nothing But The Truth. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. You're tapped into nothing but the truth. I'm your girl, Noni Juice, holding it down with my boy, Ben Jammin. It's amazing. And we got Shake in the building, you guys. Owner of Clicks, Sneaks. What's the other one? Black Market, MKE? Yeah, well, Black Market, uh, that's another segue. So Black Market is about to, is about to move. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Where? Yeah. Why? Because it's like I want to, like, that's going to be J Academy. Oh, got so, it. So yeah, so we about to make a little transformation and stuff, you know. So I got a lot of um this is a whole nother segue, but I got a lot of uh I got a huge donation from Logitech. So I, I got saw like a bunch that. Of, yeah, I got a bunch of mics and keyboards and monitors and lights and all this other stuff. So I'm gonna kinda have like a little 
Um, I'm going to make a little studio on kind of like one side. Then on the other side, I'm kind of going to have, that's where I'm going to have the, you know, the Chromebooks and stuff like that for the kids. And so we're going to, yeah. I was going to ask you about J Academy and how that has been going because I know I see the page and you guys have a lot like the basketball tryouts and you know got the Logitech yep. stuff. So yep. tell us about J Academy and why you started it. Um, so J Academy was started. Why did I start that, man? I don't because I was you know I've been doing nonprofit stuff in Milwaukee since two thousand and eight. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then it was kind of like as I started to grow it, I didn't really. You know, like when I, when you approaching corporations for donations, stuff like that, they was like, oh, so you got a nonprofit? I was like, what? You know what I'm saying? What do I need that for? You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And so then I kind of learned that you needed that. So then I started um, I started J Academy to kind of like have, you know, kind of like build my own situation. I feel, I see um, the Boys and Girls Clubs and the Wise and stuff like that. Like the Wise is pretty much gone. Yeah, you know, they're they dying off. School. Yeah, they turn into schools or they either went private and, you know, or they so far out, like, we can't really get to them and stuff like that. So the kids don't really have, like, you know, I remember the Wise used to be, like, they used to have dances on the weekends. Mm-hmm. and You know what I'm saying? They had, like, basketball tournaments, pool tournaments, all this different, these different kind of things. And, like, all that stuff is kind of going away. So J Academy is going to, is, is we, we're going to fill that void, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to fill that void, so. I love it. The kids are going to love it. How can people be a part of it, their kids, if they want to be a part of J Academy? Just the things that you are doing with J Academy. Well, the the J Academy officially is going to open August 31st. Okay. So that's going to be the the day. Like, we're going to do it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of coincide with um the um my back to school event Mm -hmm. so we're gonna do it on the same day so like we're gonna have we're gonna renovate the building everything should be done by then um and we're gonna have the back to school and then the launch of the official j academy so we're gonna have like a sign up so if they want to like you know find out what we're doing now um they can the best way is just instagram like that's the best way it's the best way got it let me look up that J Academy because how do you spell it? J A Y Academy. Yep. yep. On Instagram. Um. With that being said, though, Shake and even talking about uh, J Academy, which is in reference to Jam Master J. Yes. Uh, honestly, this th- I've been waiting to ask this <laughs> I honestly, know. since almost <laughs> like uh, actually the top of this year. Yeah. Okay. So in hip hop, there have always been unsolved murders, right? Whether mm-hmm. it was the Biggie and Tupac and Jam Master J, mm-hmm. right? But with that being said, back in February, uh, a jury found two men guilty of murdering and killing the hip-hop icon Jam Master J in New York City recording studio in 02. All right, Carl Jordan and Ronald Washington. Um, they have been accused of this. Uh, with that being said, um, how do you feel about uh, these two convicted uh, uh, murderers? I mean... And did you know them prior to? Or? 100, 1,000% I knew them. Interesting. Um... I mean, at the end of the day, man, they they got off better than Jay. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you know he ain't here no more, right? You know what I'm saying? And we don't get Jay back, you know. And then it's just unfortunate that it took so long. Like his mom passed away, his brother, mm-hmm. his sister. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was kind of like you know waiting for that day. So they you know they weren't they not even here to to see it. So you know it's I mean it's a it's a good it's a good thing. And like I said, and then it's a bad thing because like I said, they made out better than Jay. Do you feel like justice was served? Oh, almost. I mean, they ain't done. Yeah, but almost, well, when it, yeah, almost, mm-hmm. almost, almost, Dang. almost. It's it's a couple other people that's I'm waiting for. So mm-hmm. you know, yeah. It's Dang. been like a lot of, even just through the years, conversations with documentaries and things like that that has been going on. I know you said you were a part of one before. Do you feel like any of those were a good representation of just the situation in general? Like, were they accurate enough? Yes. Yes and no. Yes and no. You know, you got to look at it like this, right? Like, everybody, like, not, maybe not the generation now, like, we probably talking about some of the kids sitting back going, like, who is Jam? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't know, right? But, like, a lot of the people that was involved in those documentaries, they did, the, they thought they were doing the right thing, but they was doing the wrong thing because at the end of the day, they was just trying to protect Jay Legacy. You know what I'm saying? And so they was kind of tiptoeing around questions or dancing around certain things and stuff like that. And so, you know, that that all of those kind of things is what made it took 27 years. You know, that's what made it take so long. Yeah. Do you think a new one should come out or be made or maybe you could make one um, in the future once all of this gets settled? Or you kind of want to just leave it where it's at? 
Well, we had a conversation with 50 uh, probably three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. I mean, I'm with it if the if the right people is with it and if we can figure out a way to, you know, like if it's some community element, you know, doing something with some kids or something mm-hmm. like that. Then, But if, if not that, then. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I just want to say I love how dedicated you are in honoring your friend. You know, consistently, mm-hmm. all the time. It seems like every single thing that you do has a little bit of him in it, and I absolutely love that. You know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I learned so I learned so much from that dude. Is it's unbelievable. Like he, they like people just don't understand when I say it. I'm like that was the greatest man I I ever knew. Like mm-hmm. in my life. Like I seen I seen it. I seen him do too much. Yeah. I seen him do too much, man. I seen him. You know. I seen him take whole rooms of Adidas stuff and ship them back to New York and give them away in Hollis. You know, I seen him, oh, uh, Jay, I need the money for the some, some, some. Here you go. I need Jay. Can you help me? Some? I seen him do too much. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I seen him do too much. I seen him. I remember we used to be at the, we used to be at shows, man, and, and the show's over and I want to go to the after. I'm like, man, let's go. And he would stay there and sign like the last autograph, like every time, like yeah. every time. He just, he did it so much. I was like, I said, all right, I know we finna be here two hours. Mm-hmm. He would sign every autograph and listen to every story of somebody saying, oh, I remember when Raising Hell and the Fresh Fest and da, da, da. And he would listen to all them stories and talk to them people and stuff. And I should be like, man, let's go to the party. And he used to always say that you never, like these people spent their last money to come here, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So he was like, you got to, you know what I'm saying, this this is a part of it, so, you know. Yeah. Do, do you think that Jam Master J would be happy with the current state of hip-hop right now? <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Like, Jay was, like, like he was a visionary, mm-hmm. you know? Like, he was a visionary. He really was, like, and I, like you know, I'm older now, so now I kind of see the things that he was talking about, like, when he was... He was speaking on, you know, he was speaking on clothing lines with the Walker Wear stuff. And that was wow. before, that was before Rock Aware. And that was before Sean John, you know, and stuff like that. And he had JMJ Records. And that was, I mean, man, if he would have, if Jay would have, he would have never did it. I mean, I know for a fact he would have never did it. But if he would have sacrificed Run DMC, right? Yeah. And probably in, let's say, like, right after um, the Run's House album, Tough Another Leather album, I should say. If he would have did that. If he just sacrificed Run DMC, say I'm not doing Run DMC no more, he would have had Ja Rule, 50 Cent, Onyx, Rozelle from the Roots, Warren G. He would have had all these dudes on JMJ Records mm. all at the same time. That's interesting. I know your head is spinning. Because I, I mean, honestly, you know, it, it goes to say where the game could have went. You yeah. Because yeah. Jam Master J already had, I mean, 50 Cent. That, yeah. that was his mentor, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So yeah. he would have had all of them. He would have had all of them at the same time because they was all coming to the studio. They was all hanging around, you know. Rozelle from the Roots, like the 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 Roots, the band, not mm-hmm. not the. But yeah, they was all hanging around and coming around and wanting to be down and stuff like that. But then it would be like it would be cool. But then you know that Run DMC schedule would come up, and then we got forty five shows out of sixty days, and mm-hmm. he gone, and then they would you know scatter off and go other places. Well, we got to wrap the show up with the bow. On the other side, I want to keep the hip-hop conversation going because I want to ask you a question ask about me. Kendrick and Cole. <laughs> On the <laughs> other side, keep it locked to you guys. We got Shake in the building. It's nothing but the truth. Nothing But The Truth with Melanie Ricks returns after this on 1017 The Truth, The Truth app, and 1017thetruth.com. Putting so much work in these streets, he got pension. I told him, chill out. Welcome back, everybody. Y'all already know what's going on. It's nothing but the truth. Noni Juice in the building with Big Jamming. It's amazing. And we got Shake in the building. Shout out to Alex putting that song on. We only got a couple more minutes, all right? So I just want to ask you real quick, Shake. How are you feeling about this whole Kendrick and J. Cole situation? I, did you see the somewhat apology that J. Cole said? Yeah, I was disappointed. Okay. At this point, you know, I just feel like this is that's hip hop is competitive. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like he should have, you know, he should have wanted to compete. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I mean, imagine, imagine if Nas apologized for Ether. Mm-hmm. You, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I just don't, you know, I don't get it. You I mean, don't it's, get it. yeah, it's, 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 it's rap. It's, it's what it is. These rappers soft shake. That's just, just. Yeah. You feel the same sentiment? I, I, I feel the same. Hey, this is hip hop. Y'all know what time it is. Yeah, it's I'm, a not, I'm not sport. gonna say. Yeah, I'm not gonna say Cole is soft. I'm just gonna say I would have loved to see him compete. I would have loved to see, you know, him saying yeah. I'm gonna pull it from everywhere and mm-hmm. da da da, and I'm sorry and stuff like that. 
because Kendrick really just put out a verse, verse fire verse, but he just put out a verse. I wanted to see a Cole song and right. yeah. a his song, you know. Because so. really, I think that's all Kendrick wanted, you know, because Kendrick wasn't really going for Cole. He was going for Drake. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think what he was doing with Cole was just like, all right, you say you the best, show me, you yeah. know, kind of like a friendly type situation. Yeah. But I think to be about, what though. Cole is upset about is the fact that he let other people pressure him into doing things and saying things that he don't even really mean for I, real. I, I think yeah. I think J. Cole went to the comments, saw everybody said that his verse was trash and was like, dang. I shouldn't have know. done that. Because <laughs> I, honestly, I mean, I, I love J. Cole. He has some of the, he has two of my most favorite uh, hip hop songs of all time. However, I feel like it forced his, his his pen a little bit and it didn't come from a genuine, genuine place. So it was one yeah, of those yeah. things where he wished he would have actually sat back on a little bit. But that's what this, this era is kind of like that. Like, even look at Drake, right? When he had to battle with Push, right? Yeah. And he just like tapped out, you know what I'm saying? It, it's just really weird. Like, Drake is like, he ain't gonna even respond either, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm waiting. Do memes. I I'm mean, waiting. He over here throwing it'll, shots at uh, Travis Scott. Long. It don't take that long. All you know right, y'all. But we got like 30 seconds. Let them know where they can get the shoes again. Clicks on Saturday, 11, uh, 11 a.m. to 414 p.m., 1916 East Capitol Drive. It's only 414 pairs, y'all. Y'all better get in line. $130, you said? 130 Okay, 130. that ain't nothing. Y'all be in these Cubs mm-hmm. doing what it do. You can get the shoes, all right? Thank you so much, Shake, for coming through, Thank giving you. us the exclusive. We appreciate you so much. We already know you can come back anytime. Thank you, Ben Jamming, for kicking it with me. It's amazing. Shout out to Alex on the ones and twos. And I am your girl, Noni Juice. This has been nothing but the truth. Thanks, y'all, so much for tapping in. 